then. Yeah. Okay, uh, first up. Okay, we've got an update to the 2.13 uh, Tricolor Ink Display Breakout. It's actually one of our first ink breakouts that we made. It's a very popular uh, uh, size and uh, style because I like the red highlighting that they've got. Um, so this updated version is the same pinout, same size, same shape, same code, everything except on the back. We now have a iSpy connector at the top. So that means that if you would like to connect to this board without having all those wires soldered or header, uh, there's now a solder free way to do it with the flex connector. We've been adding iSpy connectors to all of our displays. Uh, we got through basically all the TFTs and now we're gonna be doing the e-inks. Next up. Next up, we've got RFM 69 modules in 900 megahertz and in, and you can see on the back here, uh, different frequencies and this one is the 433 it's got the red dot uh, so these modules are not LoRa they are like ISM band ra packet radios that said if you don't need LoRa um, they're these are a lot cheaper because you're not paying the LoRa licensing fee um, the complexity they're great for if you want to send messages between um, different devices there's an SPI protocol there's library code uh, for Arduino for MicroPython for CircuitPython again the RFM series is super popular it can do FSK, ASK. People also use these to listen in. You don't have to use them for transmission. They're great for listening because they're also transceivers. That said, whenever people are like, oh, I want to have, you know, a board that senses data over here, send data to another board over there. I don't want to use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. I just want like the packets to be sent. Um, this has uh, CRC management for you. So it does like, you know, data correction and checking for you, uh, packetization, addressing, all that good stuff. Um, so the RFM 69 series comes in two frequency sets, 900 megahertz, 433. Uh, use whatever is the ISM band in your area. Stop. Next up, we've got two lenses for the uh, Raspberry Pi 12 megapixel camera that we put in the shop a couple weeks ago. Um, so that's the camera at the bottom, and those are the lenses. And there's two lenses. One is the telephoto lens, and one is the yeah. wide-angle lens. So there's two. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, I think that's the wide-angle. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't yeah. know which one is which. One's yeah. wide-angle, and one is a telephoto. Um, and the narrow one is a telephoto, and the... Yeah, the, that makes Yeah, sense. this one. That looks that's like a tele telephoto. Yeah. And uh, the other one is wide. Um the wide is like 120 degree, the, the telephoto is I think uh, 18 degrees, it's very narrow, um, but it's great for far distances. So one is basically for close up cats and one is for far away cats, depending on what you're photographing. Um, so let me- <laughs> That pretty much describes it. That's pretty much it. Well, they're both, you know, they're yeah. both used for like, you know, you want to take photos of, of something far away. Uh, hold on, let me take this overhead a little closer and I can show the lens. Um, so the lenses screw on, so this is the wide, and you can see it's got that lens and it's going to distort stuff on the outer edges, right? But that's on purpose, it's wide angle. And then you focus it by uh, screwing in and out. And then uh, don't forget, um, this is uh, a raw, like you can kind of barely see the, Shh. let's see if I can. When you turn, yeah. I want to show the sensor. So there's a sensor inside. So you have to have the lens. This doesn't work without um, the lens on top. Otherwise, the you sensor can be damaged. Grab those lights too, if you want to. As long as you want to try to jam the light down in there. Okay. Yeah, and then you can go that way. Oh yeah, that worked. Yeah. So you can see there's there was a nice 12 megapixel. Ooh, there you go. The sensor inside, and then. Yeah, again. Whoa! Too close. Too many pixels. There okay, you, go. you can back it up. Um. So this is the wide angle, and then, um, as we mentioned, there's also the uh, telephoto lens. Uh, narrower, but the same threading, and again, you know, remove the protector, uh, put it on, and then you can focus in and out by um, screwing it on, screwing it. That's why there's so many threads. So two lenses, um, they don't come with the camera, and the camera doesn't come with the lenses, so you know, it's, it's an added expense, but, you know, it really takes the camera up a notch, uh, makes it a lot more usable for, um, for this uh, wide angle, good for like uh, security camera type footage, telephoto when you want to take uh, photos of far away birds or cats. All righty. Next up to start the show, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, our community is these AT Tinies. Yay, AT Tinies. We have two more breakouts. 
for the AT Tiny series. We already did the AT Tiny 817, and this is the 816, and we also have the 1616, which looks very similar, except one says 816 on the back and the front, and one says 1616. Yeah. Um, these are a much smaller version of um, the AT Tiny, uh, teeny mega core, basically. They're very powerful chips. Um, but they're very small and they're very simple, which is what I like about them. And we use them, you know, for this, I, I basically designed these for my development because um, I'm making new Seesaw breakout boards now that chips are finally available again. And it turns out that uh, in some cases I want a much smaller chip than the uh, 7 series. I want the 6 series, which is a tinier uh, QFN chip. Um, these run three volts or five volts. They run with up to 20 megahertz internal clock. They're very easy to program because they use UPDI, which means you can use uh, one resistor, a wire, and a USB serial converter of any kind, any kind of cable or breakout, just connect the RXTX pins through the resistor and then wire to the UPDI pin to program them. Um, we use the Spence Condi um, AT Tiny. Uh, teeny mega core that uh, for Arduino to do development for it. This just is our little development board, breaks out all the pins. Uh, you get I squared C. Um, like I said, one is 816, one is 1616. The 816 has um, you know a bunch of ADC. It even has an 8-bit DAC, uh, lots of PWMs, lots of GPIOs, and um, has uh, eight megabytes, sorry, eight kilobytes of flash and I think 512 bytes of RAM or 256 bytes of RAM. And the 1616, um, I remember, has 16 kilobytes of flash and has a whopping two kilobytes of SRAM. So there's some cases where you want the 1616. Um, it, you know, it depends on what is available in the market as well. Like right now, uh, so I can get some of the one chip and some of the other. So there's cases where you want one or the other. And it's the, the pricing and the availability may vary, which is why I'm carrying both. Um, and I'm using, again, a Seesaw development. It comes with Seesaw code on it. So you can use it as a GPO expander. I've got a demo um, here. Like I just kind of put one together really fast. So the 1616 has a lot of SRAM, which means um, what I've got here is a uh, a uh, Metro Mini, so it, it, at Mega 328. And it's connected through I squared C. So this is power, move the power pins down because they're just power. This is that uh, AT Tiny board. And um, I have the output of, whoa, it's close. The uh, zero pin is connected to the NeoPixel data. And then I have power coming from um, USB. And this is uh, getting I squared C commands telling it to set the NeoPixels that it then writes. So basically it's acting on I squared C to NeoPixel buffer. And then you can see here, uh, it's driving these NeoPixels and it's doing a little rainbow swirl very slowly because it's I, it's going over I squared C. So remember, it's not going to be very fast, but you know you want to drive um, 30 NeoPixels is actually just fine. Uh, so this one is the 1616 and I just put code in to make it, uh, it has 200, 2K of SRAM instead of either the 256 or the 512 bytes that um the 816 has and so you can actually you know drive uh this is like, you know 300 pixels or something or 200 pixels uh, it can buffer the memory for that whereas the smaller one can't but um we're also going to be doing uh, some you know um projects that do need a little bit more ram storage and so that's why i've got the 1616. the 816 will do the job for most seesaw projects where you just want you know i squared c to um gpio or adc and then, of course, if you want, you can always reprogram it with that UPDI pin from within Arduino by using that USB serial converter um, with a one resistor. And then you can use that as a controller for sensing other I2C devices. It doesn't have to be like one where it can be the other. It's acting as an I2C peripheral, but it can act as an I2C controller. I mean, it's a 16K 8-bit microcontroller running at 20 megahertz. You can do quite a few projects with it. Um, doesn't have USB, but uh, we do stick on a regulator so you can run it at uh, three volts. By default, it runs at whatever you power it with. Um, one thing, again, I like about it is it runs three to five volts just fine. Um, there's brown detect. Um, internal oscillator can run at multiple different frequencies. And there's great Arduino support for it. And that's the new product. That's the new product. Um, the, the lighting turned out really pretty on that. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's very good. All right. And that is the products. Oh.